Hear ye, hear ye. Welcome to the final part of Ruffled Bricks' Jet Set Woolly speedrunning tutorial with me, Ruffled Bricks. Having completed the any percent speedrunning route in the previous six parts, we'll now be discussing the Max Lives and Warpless speedrun categories for the few squares out there who like a few rules with their speedrunning. In Max Lives, the aim is to complete the game without losing any lives that you don't need to which means you're allowed to lose that one life on the conservatory roof, and that's it. Most of this section will be covering how to do all of the death warp rooms without actually death warping, which, if you're a beginner at speedrunning Jet Set Willy, may help you learn the game more safely than the who needs lives attitude expressed in the previous parts of this tutorial. Although note that the beginning and end of this route differ slightly from the any percent route for optimization. In the warpless category, you are not allowed to exploit any unintentional warps in the game. So it's essentially the no major glitches category for Jet Set Willy. You'll therefore need to significantly rejig the order in which you tackle the mansion, and this tutorial will show you how. Although note that despite the name, death warps are still allowed in the warpless category, so your speed run will still be ending with one life left, but you'll be doing a different set of death warps to the ones in any percent. Note that most of the strats for the individual rooms in the mansion will be identical to the any percent route in both of these routes as well. So in this part we'll only be covering the points at which the routes diverge and then we'll skip past the rest. You can refer to the previous six parts of the tutorial if you want to brush up on any of those rooms. One quick aesthetic note, when recording the Max Lives section of the tutorial, I forgot to change the splits to my Max Lives ones, so just ignore those. Finally, note that the optimum route for Warpless was updated very recently due to a new discovery in the Banyan Tree, and because of that I had to re-record this entire section of the tutorial which is why most of the colour has now drained from my shirt. Alright people, let's adapt. So most of the Max Lives route is exactly the same as any percent. There is one change that we have made though that's significant, and that is that rather than going down and collecting the chapel item, and going round the main stairway at the beginning of the run. We actually now do this at the end. So what we do instead is we go through the nightmare room. Wait for the yellow Maria to get out of your way first. Then we also have to wait for the yellow foot and the pink Maria, although we can go under the pink Maria earlier than you would think you could. You can actually do it quicker than I did it there. And then we're going to pick up from the any percent route from the banyan tree. And the reason we do this is we only lose one life in the any percent route. So we want to get that one life out of the way as soon as possible so that the as much of the game runs ever so slightly quicker uh, as possible. And so therefore, this is the quickest route to get up to the conservatory roof. From here, follow the route around the exact same way you would do for any percent. So conservatory roof, orangery, swimming pool, west wing, etc. The only significant difference is that you'll no longer be death warping any of the rooms. So here's how to adapt the cold store, tool shed, off license and cuckoo's nest for a max live speed run. This is how you would do this room properly. So, stand under the icicle again, double jump over the raspberry ripple, wait for it to come back and jump over again. So this first section is the same, drop onto the rope and then stay on the rope and nudge up a couple of uh, rungs there so you're facing to the left. Now jump, just as Willie gets to the snowflake there, uh, jump across to the left and that will get you the third item and land on the platform. Then as the yellow penguin passes, go for the fourth and just jump over the yellow penguin like that. And you will then have to jump over this blue egg in the back stairway as well, because that is um, that is coming straight for you. So here it is all in one go. So go into the cold store, vertical jump, vertical jump, and right jump 
over the Raspberry record, drop down, grab the second item, nudge up like so. There's just a couple of dots beneath you in this. Face to the left as well. Uh, jump as you reach the snowflake, grab the third item, drop down as the penguin passes, and jump over the penguin and over the blue egg to uh, safety and, and keep moving as well. That's uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't stop. So the tool shed is one of the easiest levels in the game normally, but uh, in the Max Lives route, it is significantly harder because you can't just fall onto the hammer. So instead, we're going to have to traverse all of this the proper way. Because of the way that it is structured, I would advise doing the tool shed after you've done the beach and the yacht and the bow rather than before as we were doing it. So from the top, jump through the stairway as before and then from the last two pixels of the platform, jump across, then drop down and drop down like this. Then jump over the pink saw onto this platform here. And then just as the yellow Swiss Army knife turns around there, which is about at this square here, uh, jump across to this platform, jump across to this one, and then you are going to want to jump onto this platform and put yourself into this mid-stride position here. Then jump once, twice, and three times across like that. And that's the quickest that you can get the tool shed done. It's about 20 seconds longer than it would be normally. So, all in one go, here we go, so jump through, jump over the clippers, drop down, drop down, grab the hammer, walk to the right, drop, jump over the pink saw, then jump to the left, then right, then left, and then jump once, twice, and three times over the green clippers. And actually, if you throw a fourth jump in as well, then it will get you onto the... Uh, stairway just slightly quicker than it would if you walk and that will get you up to the back door just that ever so slightly quicker so here's how to do the off license without losing a life it's pretty similar but basically so same as before wait for the red skull to go up and then the cyan ball to go up And then up the stairs, jump to the right, and then three jumps to the left. And then grab this item up here. Grab these, and this time hold position here at the ends there, because then you can jump over the radar safely. Jump as you get to the last square of that conveyor belt here and that will land you again safely on this platform without any issues and then just drop to the right, walk to the left. You're going to have to wait for the cyan ball to get out of the way but then that is how you basically do that for the Max Lives version. So part of the problem with um, doing Cuckoo's Nest here is you have not just these two enemies but also this arrow that comes right for you quite quickly. I'm going to show you the safe strat for this first of all just because the uh, the quick strat is uh, is quite difficult and you may want something to fall back on. So the safe strat for this is jump over the saw and then jump straight back over the saw and follow it to the right there so the arrow whizzes over and jump over the saw and you can go as far up the stairs as this the full stride position. This is the only position in the entire room where you are not at risk from getting hit by the saw or the egg, unless you want to clip through the staircase and walk into the hedges, and that's just a waste of time. Now, this position is also a part of the quick strat, so memorize it. But basically, just wait for the egg to move to the right, vertical jump, and then follow the saw back to the left, and jump over it when it gets to the left hand side of its cycle. So that's the safe strat for the cuckoo's nest, but it's not the quickest strat for the cuckoo's nest. So the quickest strat for this is as follows. So jump straight over the saw, walk to the stairs and pause on that position there. And then you have to, as you can see, nudge two pixels to the right 
once the arrow has passed. So you pause in the monoleg position on the second step of the staircase there because that position is low enough for you to avoid getting hit by the arrow. And then you nudge twice, two pixels to the right to get into this full stride position here. So jump over the saw, mon oh, mono leg, and then full stride and vertical jump like that. So you notice I, I was able to correct myself quite quickly there. Um, because you do have a little bit of time before the arrow hits you. You've got like probably half, yeah, just about half a second or so before the arrow hits you, but pretty tight window if you don't get that position straight off the bat. And then once the arrow has passed, you have less than half a second to uh, nudge two pixels to the right there to get into the safe position. You can preemptive jump into Cuckoo's Nest if you're doing the max live strat because uh, you're not looking to death warp back to the beginning of it, so therefore it doesn't matter. Um, and also if you die doing that strat in Max Lives, it, well, you need to reset, actually, because you've completely ruined the run. Then the route continues mostly the same as any percent, completing the mega tree, entering the front door, grabbing the item above, scaling the east wall, crossing the roof, and warping back down to Ballroom East. There will then be another change, however, when we get past Ballroom West. Because we haven't done the main stairway there yet, we're now gonna do that at this point in the run. And we're gonna use the same strat that we did for any percent. And you're then going to do the kitchens straight after this. Go up to the banyan tree, grab the ring, and then you're gonna go and do the nightmare room. So here is how you do Nightmare Room in the Max Lives route. So most of it is the same. So we're going to use the same jumps here to get across the room. Same positions to avoid the Marias. And jump across. And then when we grab the pint glass, move to the right of the platform and jump down like that. And drop right off the platform here. You're going to have to wait for Yellow Maria to get out of the way there. But walk right jump through the first landing staircase because we're going to do the chapel now and then drop into main stairway jump straight back out again in order to reset the yellow monk cycle and that will get you in the chapel nice and quick and then to do the chapel without losing a life this is how you do it so vertical jump over the pink monk again and we're going to clip through the stairway again and this time rather than doing three jumps here to uh, jump up the candle and hit the priest's head. We're going to do four jumps. And it's going to be two right jumps and a turn and then a vertical jump. So the two right jumps will get you um, as far to the right in this candle as you need to be. Then the left turn will turn Willy so that he is in the mid stride position where he can't be harmed by the priest's head and then the last jump will get him to the top of the candle so here we go one two turn and four like that now jump to the top of the stairway put yourself in the full stride position because that is the furthest to the left that you can get and then this pink monk here who's actually walking backwards um, once the pink monk gets a couple of pixels from the bottom of the stairway, we are going to run down. So here he comes and walk down. And you do that timing because then when you get just to the left of the scroll here, you can jump over the monk like that. And that's the quickest possible way. I mean, it's a bit of a dangerous jump, that one. It's right near the end of the run as well. So if you're worried about throwing the run away, then just wait on the right-hand side of the green scroll. And then when the pink monk comes back towards you, then just the vertical jump over it. And then just head upstairs, grab the top landing item, and go to bed. And that is how you do a Max Live speed run. Now the main difference between uh, warp plus percent and the other categories of speedrunning this game are that in warp plus uh, you are not allowed to exploit any of the uh, unintended warps 
that are available throughout the game. So there's not too many of those in this game, but there is one very significant one that, you, as you know, we use, and that is the Rescue Esmeralda warp into Ballroom East. This actually is not an intended mechanic in the game, as far as anyone is aware. This is actually an accidental warp that was left in the coding. So therefore, this counts technically as a glitch in the game. The other place in the game that you can do a warp through the ceiling uh, to another part of the map is the watchtower. And the way that you would do that is if you jump all the way across to here, then walk up onto the conveyor belt here and jump through the roof, you end up in the off license. Now this warp doesn't actually get used in any of the speed runs because it's not particularly useful. Like there's no route around the mansion whereby warping from the watchtower to the off license would make the overall experience quicker. So we just don't use that one at all. Nonetheless, as part of warp plus percent speed running, you cannot use that warp either. Also, you're no longer allowed to do the rope trick in on the roof or the beach where you jump through the ceiling and respawn at the foot of the room, as this also counts as a warp. So, three, two, one, go. So you grab the tap at the beginning, same as always, and you save the top landing till last because uh, as established in part six, it is quicker to uh, do, do it that way around and to do it at the beginning. The first main change in the run, however, happens in the next room, which is the chapel. Now, same as before, the chapel, we are gonna do this as a death warp room. However, we are not going to leave the room uh, via the left-hand side this time. We're actually gonna leave the room from the bottom. So go in, vertical jump over the pink monk like that, and then clip through the staircase like this. Same as before, then jump up the candle. And then this time, vertical jump over the pink monk again and clip through the staircase again, and then drop through this pit over here and this takes you down to the top section of ballroom west if you were to do this without losing a life then what you would do would be jump over the pink monk and clip through the stairs as per and then you would do two right jumps and then a turning jump here and a vertical jump up to the top of the candle and then we'll wait for the blue demon to head back up like this and then we have to go back there to the H in the, and then clip through the stairs like that. This version of the death warp doesn't save you quite as much time as the whopping 50 to 20 seconds benefit you get in the any percent route, but it still saves you almost 10 seconds compared to waiting for the enemies to get out of the way. It also gets rid of your first life very early on to allow the rest of the game to run that little bit quicker and it gives you more of a run-up for the second stair clip compared to having to try and achieve it after turning on the spot which is a bit fiddly and quite dangerous this takes you down to ballroom west the top of it and then if you head right into ballroom east you can then start your route here by going towards the front door and grabbing the front door item so you're basically picking up from uh, this point in tutorial part five and you're then going to climb up the east wall and go around the roof section first as opposed to last in the run this is basically rerouting the mansion so that you can uh, get through everything quicker given that you can't warp so then the route from there is about the same as it would be from parts five and six of the tutorial up until we get to on the roof because you're no longer allowed to do the rope trick that I showed you in part six. So instead you just have to do uh, on the roof uh, the same old terribly slow and boring way that I originally showed you. So that's the only main change you have to do here. Because of the way that we have rerouted this uh, run, we want to actually death warp some rooms earlier on 
as I've already shown you, um, because if you were to do the normal death warps in this run, they would actually be all backloaded, which would mean that they would occur towards the end of the run rather than the beginning. So because of that, the second and third death warps in this run are different from the ones in the Any% percent run. We're actually doing death warps in two completely different rooms that occur earlier in this run in order to start uh, getting our lives out of the way quicker. And the second death warp of this run is going to be just up here in the Watchtower. So you start the Watchtower the same way that you would normally by just holding jump for three then turning around and jumping over the pink sunflower and grabbing that item there and then as the bird passes you jump up here drop onto the plant and bosh there goes your second life in the run so that death warp there does actually save you uh, a few seconds getting back to the entrance of the watchtower uh, somewhere between five and ten seconds i believe in doing that because it means you don't have to wait for the sunflower cycle to get back into the correct position but because it's earlier in the run then it means that uh, again we lose a life uh, fairly early on uh, so we can get the game running quicker sooner so that's the second death warp that you will be wanting to do in this run then we'll continue to the right as normal. Now the third death warp of the warpless run is coming up in the next room, which is uh, on top of the house. And what you do here, run straight in, drop down, jump across like this. And then the moment you touch the flagpole end, just jump into the flag. And that is how you do that death warp there. Basically, as long as you don't jump any later, than probably the first or second pixel of grabbing the item then you should hit the flag easily and go back to the beginning of the room again that's normally only like a five second save that you get from doing that death warp which is why it's not prioritized in any of the other routes but because this is quite an early room in the route you want to do it here just to lighten your load as far as lives go uh, just so that the game again can start running a bit quicker sooner at this stage as you know normally we would be jumping into the ceiling to warp down to ballroom east however that is illegal in this particular speed run so what we're going to do instead is this so jump up to grab the items then drop down walk down the stairs drop down onto these stairs here and we're dropping down into emergency generator again and heading left now what this means is because we have no quick way of getting back from Res Rescue Esmeralda, then instead we are rerouting it by going around the attic route again. So this means that we're going to go through Emergency Generator, Dr. Jones, the attic, and under the roof twice in this route, because you need to do that to get back into the general area of the house, given that the warp is no longer available to you. So what you need to do then is, when you're going to Dr. Jones, just jump onto the platform, edge jump, onto the trunk like that just run straight up it this time round and if you do that with this timing then the flying rodent there should be in perfect position for you to go straight past them as you land at the bottom like that so do the attic the same as normal and then run along once again to the end of the conveyor belt and this time rather than going up the stairs you are going to want to go left and i mentioned this uh, not just because that's what you want to do, but also because I have failed speed runs of Warpless before by forgetting that I've already done the roof section um, and going back up the stairs again, thus uh, wasting mine and everyone else's time. You might want to start chanting to yourself, already done roof, already done roof, or conservatory roof, conservatory roof, or whatever. Just find a chant that works for you in order to ensure that you end up going into the correct room at this junction. Then... When you go into the conservatory roof, jump over the clippers like that as they come at you quite quickly off the bat. Saying that, I wouldn't necessarily advise doing this as a preemptive jump. It can work as a preemptive jump, but you kind of need to get the very last pixel before you end up in the conservatory roof in order to clear the shears. Uh, otherwise, if you are one pixel earlier than that, then I believe you will crash into the clippers in an infinite death loop. So jump over the shears 
and then head down the side of the conservatory roof like that then head down side of the orangery head down past the west wing roof we're not going to grab those items yet then down the west wing and then into the back stairway and we're going to do the cold store now and here is another major change in this route so much like in the max lives run uh, we're not going to death warp in the cold store we're actually going to exit it from the ceiling so we're actually going to climb up the rope and go into the bottom of the swimming pool we do this then the same as max lives to begin with so two vertical jumps over the raspberry ripple to grab the first of the icicles then jump right over drop down grab the second icicle move up the rope a couple of dots like that and then as the rope swings back when you get to the snowflake jump grabbing the third icicle drop down after the penguin goes to your left jump onto the rope and hold right until you get just under that snowflake there and then go up into the swimming pool um, where Willie seems to have uh, an inordinate amount of lung capacity so you can stay in the water as long as you like and he won't drown uh, he'll just make friends with the aquatic monk you'll notice we've grabbed the item again at this point we are actually visiting the swimming pool twice in this particular route um, but that's mainly because the second time round it's just easier to get back into the normal route um, but either way you're going to get the item no matter what so we get it on this this visit of the room so you don't need to worry about it now this is actually a relatively recent route for the warpless percent speed runs because previously rather than going up the rope we actually went right into the kitchen and then we would cross the entire floor of the kitchen we'd drop into the main stairway to grab the left hand item and then we would go through the kitchens grabbing the banyan tree item and then the nightmare room uh, doing a death warp there instead however this version of the route actually saves you between 15 and 20 seconds compared to going through the kitchens from this junction here so it would be important to try and learn this version of the route uh, instead of that although you can refer to that as a backup if you watch some of my older warpless percent speed runs on youtube then uh, you'll be able to see how the route used to be and just how sluggish and naive we all were now from here we're going to go right up out of the pool and into the banyan tree and what we're going to do here is we are going to cross the central section of the banyan tree so we're going to get past all three of these enemies so that we get to this pillar over here this requires some pretty tough pixel perfect jumps so the first one is from this position here so the mid stride position which is three stairs up the staircase what you want to do from there is you want to do a right jump that will clip you into the staircase here in the full stride position this green spider web here you want to wait until that starts heading downwards again when it does uh, jump right again from this position and that will actually clip you into the top solid block of this pillar here so watch jump like that and you clip into the top square of the pillar like that it's one of uh, only a, a, a very small number of occasions in this run where you actually end up clipping into blocks technically that kind of counts as a glitch in this game um, but there's actually no way of getting into the chapel um, without actually clipping into solid blocks in the first landing so that's why we have a warpless route for jet set willy speed running but not a glitchless route because there's too many glitches in the game effectively to make a glitchless route worthwhile we are going to wait for the pink demon to go up to the top and then back again because once the pink demon has done that the mother chip over here nice callback there will be heading downwards and 
because of that we are then able to actually jump over both the demon and the mother chip in one go the way that we're going to do this is as follows when this demon has gone to the top and then back to the bottom the moment it touches the bottom you are going to hold apostrophe jump for two jumps the first jump is going to jump you on top of this pillar so that you land right on the edge of it and then the second jump is actually going to jump you from this pillar onto this one and it will look like you're going to hit the mother chip but actually you'll be in the mono leg position and you will just dodge it now you actually have a few frames to be able to pull this off it's not a frame perfect jump so you don't need to worry about it too much but the visual cue is what you want to um, work with on this jump so here we go so demon goes up down to the bottom and hold jump one two like that and there you are we are now onto this pillar here we're now going to pick up from uh this part in the any percent route so move to the last pixel to the right of this turn around and then um, jump across this pillar and then jump back and do your turning quadruple jump up to a bit of tree here it is all in one go so jump from that mid stride position clip into the stairs jump over the green spider web as it heads down move to the mid stride position here wait for the demon to head to the bottom and then hold two jumps two apostrophe jumps there go to the edge turn around and then when the mother chip is low enough jump into the middle pillar and then when the demon's low enough jump for your turning quadruple jump to get up a bit of tree uh, one thing to bear in mind by the way is you don't necessarily need to do both of those jumps from uh the timing that i did it so when you're clipped into the pillar you can actually jump to the top of the pillar uh earlier than i did and then just do that jump accordingly when the demon is in the right place the reason i, I do both of those jumps in one go is because i feel that the demon gives you a much easier visual cue when you jump over them because rather than having to analyze other pixel positions then basically it's as simple as just waiting for demon to hit the bottom of their cycle and then boom like that one two so nice and easy uh, looks quite intimidating that but as long as you hit all of those positions accordingly then it shouldn't be a problem and then this route is then going to be the same from here all the way uh, through the conservatory roof and the orangery uh, down into the swimming pool again although this time you won't get the item because you've already got it and then you'll go around the west wing and the west bedroom circuit grabbing those items that we passed earlier and then go down into the back stairway again so if you refer to parts two and three of this tutorial then that will give you the information you need to get around the rooms after this one once you've done west wing roof then you will head down through the west wing again and one thing you want to be aware of this time is again not to go into the cold store this time round because you have already done it in this particular route and much like the um, under the roof junction it's another instance where I often have to say to myself don't do the cold store don't do the cold store don't do the cold store because I keep forgetting that I've already done it and then I go in there and I waste a lot of time doing it but rather than going into the cold store this time you go straight into the back door and then from here the route is going to be pretty much identical to the any percent route going forward so the final three death warps in this run are going to be exactly the same as they are in any percent so death warp number four is going to be the tool shed death warp number five is going to be the off license and death warp number six is going to be the cuckoo's nest so your route will then be the same up until the hall now in the hall you're going to avoid the three plants the same way as normal but this time round you're going to actually go through the staircase so you're going to clip through it rather than going up it because we're now going into ballroom east the route at this section is much more similar to max lives than it is to any percent because what we're going to do here 
is from Ballroom East, we're going to head to the left. We're going to go grab the items from Ballroom West. Uh, we're going to grab the items from the main stairway and then go into the kitchens, scale the kitchens and grab the item from underneath the banyan tree. And we're then going to do the nightmare room. And with the nightmare room, we're going to do it the same way that we do it in Max Lives. So we're going to do that with no death warps whatsoever. We're going to um, safely jump down to the lower platform in a nightmare room and then drop right and avoid Yellow Maria on the way into the first landing. The only difference at this point is that rather than going into the chapel, since you've already done that, you're instead going to go up the stairs in the first landing to the top landing and go around to grab the last item before you go into the master bedroom. So that is how you adapt the route for a warpless speedrun. And there we have it. That is everything I've learned about speedrunning Jet Set Willy to date. So what next? A guide to speedrunning Jet Set Willy 2 The Final Frontier? The last official game in the Minor Willy trilogy? <laughs> well, <laughs> funny you should ask. <laughs> no. I, I, I haven't learned how to play that one yet. And it handles very differently to the first two games, so might take a while, that one. Thank you for watching this tutorial, though, and if you have any questions, feedback, or other reactions that can be expressed in words, feel free to leave a comment below the video. And check out my Twitch channel if you want to see where my obsessive speedrun adventures take me next. This tutorial is over.